Amen. Amen. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna um, keep stepping forward in all that we're doing as a, as the body of Christ, and uh, I am very very excited about a lot of things that is going on. I know that there's still a tremendous amount of groundwork being put down. Uh, slabs of granite, if you will, or cement just being laid down, and so that there'll be a lot of things that are going to be able to be handled in here, and uh, a lot of things being mastered, and a lot of hard work being done, um, there's no doubt about that, and I'm grateful for it, I know it's right, do you think, Anthony, um, it's part of the package, and I know it's part of the focus of the body of Christ to to have a lot of hard work going on during the week. We're supposed to work in six days and then rest on one. And it's set up right now where we have a couple days of rest, which is sometimes it doesn't seem like enough, but bless the Lord, oh my soul. We're blessed to have jobs. We're blessed to have an income. We're blessed to see how far we've come thus far. And um, I am beyond encouraged about what's going on. So um, I want everybody to know that what's going on is right, and it's sound, and it's healthy, and I know where I need to be, and I know where I'm going to be learning from, um, standing shoulder to shoulder with people who've been doing this a lot longer than us, and standing true to the doctrine, I think, is the most safe and right, or found in the right, rightest way, you know, and we're going to be getting into the Word, and Daniel 3 is just one of the chunks that we're going to be looking at, um, but today we're going to do a couple specials. I wanted to do uh, a song, we'll just do the songs all together today, um, just that How Great Thou Art song was pretty much the theme of the day because of um, the theme, which you can see, it's going to be, Thy power is evident, O God. And that's that's what it's all about. It's about God's power. And the word we're going to get into tonight is going to be in regards to um, really finding out what the bedrock of truth really is. And how do you know God is really there? How do we know God? How do we know what is right in these last days? And it, it can get confusing sometimes when we don't see it from the right light. And... Uh, you know, like last week we had a visitation from some uh, cult members, and I like to talk to anybody. So people wonder, why, why do you let them in your house? And I say, because I love to talk to everybody. I talk to anybody and everybody who is respectful. That's an honest conversation, whether the atheist or Satanist, Luciferian. I've talked to them all, and I've done it. I've talked to just so many different versions of what people believe, and they believe in the Bible. And they have a different view. They don't see it from God's powerful perspective. They see it from a different perspective. And that's why I, I just keep going back to the thing that matters most. The thing easiest lost. And in in, in, in when it comes to humankind, it doesn't matter whether it's the early, or early of the last days. Any time in the church age, any time in the Old Testament, any time in any place at all, it's always been hard to focus on what matters most. It's always been a war for the human soul to completely lean into where we're supposed to. And look at the Word of God from the right perspective and not something that we can learn about so we can say we know it all, but to let the Word of God shape, and, shape in our character to the, to, the, to the likeness of Christ and to the character of Christ is always what it's about. And if that's not happening, we're not, our perspective will be open for things that don't make any sense to what God really wants it at, at all. So tonight we're going to, or today, yeah, t this evening we're going to listen to um, a scripture reading from Sister Linda. And we're going to listen to um, a, a thought from some of the stuff that Kathy's been looking at. We've all been taking in a tremendous amount of things. And uh, the house church movement a lot of times is like that, where people will all have a chance to share. And um, I hope it will go over very well. It's very scary sometimes when, when you pass the mic to certain people because you, you never know. But, you know, I know everybody here. But you never know what's going on in someone's life. You never know. Like, people have those... People, they say, oh, it's the sweetest thing ever. And 20 years into the, having the dog, one day it takes a big chunk of someone's arm off because you just never know what's going to happen. And same, I don't know what's going on in people's life. I don't know what spirit they're in. I don't know what, it's scary to pass the mic to people because you never know what's going to happen, you know. And, it's, and I don't want certain things to be laid down. I'm very protective of what's been said in here because I care about people's souls. I know that God is raising me up to be a shepherd to truly look after souls in a genuine godly way. And it matters so much. In these last days or any days under on this earth, deception is normal. It's normal to be deceived and lose track of what matters most. And I do care and I will acknowledge the things that need to be not acknowledged. If someone is talking out of line, it won't happen. I'll just 
bring, we'll bring it to a, a blunt halt if need be. And I'll try to do it respectfully, but just so people know when we're talking openly that it's going to be a time of fearful, knowing that we're going to be giving an account. We're all going to have a day of accountability before the Almighty and, and what we have said. And it does matter. It matters so much what we say. It matters so much how we conduct ourselves. It matters so much what voices we're listening to and what perspective we're listening to about the light on the Word of God. I've heard 50 different ones of them, and most of them are wrong. Most of them aren't even close. Ludicrous things I've heard come from people's mouths and the, the calculations they come up with. I just can't even believe it's humanly possible, but it is. It is possible, and it is happening, and it terrifies me. Even though I know the Bible says there's going to be rampant deception in the last days, it still terrifies me to see it happening, to see people live as if Jesus is not really going to come back, to see them care about things of this world, even though the Bible says that people are going to say these things in the last hour, in the final seconds of their life before they face the wrath of God, before they face the judgment of God. They're going to see they're going to see what's going on in their life right now. And it matches what he warned us about at the final moments of safety and chance. It's terrifying to know what people are lured into. It's terrifying to see what people are uh, ad ad adhering their emotions to and their heart to. I know we have to focus on our work. It's part of the package. Work six days and rest on one. Praise be to God for hard work. We should all be working on something. We should always be learning. We should always be releasing. We should always be sharing. But tonight we're going to get into the power of God again and remember who He is and what does it look like when He is really evident in our life. Amen? Amen. 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 Sister, um, would you come and read your scriptures for us, please? Can you aim the camera at her, please? Bless Sister Linda. Hallelujah. going to be reading from Exodus chapter 19, 3 to 5. Let's go with your hand, please. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. Sowing the Seed, and I'm just going to get right into the story. It's called The Little Schoolboy's Prayer Meeting. Um, so, my, so mightily grew the Word of God and prevailed. Acts 19.20. Uh, so there's this little boy, and he lived in uh, Connecticut during the 19, uh, 1850s. And um, he, I guess during this time there was the revival, and um, he got converted to God, and so um, he started going to school, and um, you know everybody knew that he was changed now, and so there were some kids that would make fun of him, and and so um, he just kind of bare, you know, kind of just dealt with it. But then um, he started becoming concerned about his, um, you know, the people at his school. So um, he um, he started uh, praying and asking God for help in the situation. And uh, he decided to ask his uh, teacher if he could use the um, the schoolroom as the kids went out for recess um, as a time um, to have a prayer meeting. And um, the teacher said, sure. And so um, all the kids are kind of wondering what was going to go on because they knew that there was going to be no, no one in there supervising. And um, they knew that the teacher didn't care about God, so um, they went in, and a lot of the kids just went in because they were curious, and then the other ones went in because they actually wanted to hear what he had to say, 
and the other one coming in just to have an opportunity to make um, fun of um, Michael, that's his name. And so um, I started having meetings, and um, he would go in there, and he um, he was actually the one that was in charge. He was like 10 or something, he was very young. And so, um, so um, he would pick a, a scripture that he wanted to read, and he had a couple songs, and then he would just pray out loud. And um, this kept going on, and there was kids that would, you know, be distracting and laughing at him and stuff like that, and he just didn't, he didn't pay it in mind and just continued with what he was doing. And um, finally, the teacher decided to kind of just peek in to see what was going on. He went in and um, saw that, um, you know, that this was actually happening, that this little boy was actually, you know, he was, he was very determined to, um, to, you know, speak the gospel to his friends. And so um, he went in and um, he grabbed the kids that were being distracting and he made them leave. And so after that, um, you know, it was, they were just having a nice, quiet um, kind of prayer meeting. And so after that, the, um, the kids that were in there, I'm going to just read a few of these words because it's just it's really good. Um, um, let's see. It says, Soon some of them became anxious about their souls and repented their sins. God in His grace saved these children. Their parents noticed the change and were delighted that their children were now more obedient and quick to ask for forgiveness when they transgressed. Mothers and fathers even found time to join their children in a little lunch hour prayer meeting. And before long, several of the parents were seeking for mercy among the little flock of praying lambs. Mm. <clears throat> the ministers in the area, hearing this wonderful news, came to see for themselves and eventually took charge of the service. The result was about 60 people received salvation. Only each only eternity, eternity will reveal what an impact this little boy had on his community. Young as he was, he had wrestled with God for fruit on his labor, and the Lord had blessed his simple efforts. How much good young Christians may accomplish when they humbly lean on their Lord for guidance. For Zion's sake will I hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness, therefore, go forth as brightness, and the salvation, therefore, as a lamp that burneth. Isaiah 62. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, there's lots of really good stories in there. Can you put the camera back over here? Sure. Amen. Yeah, we heard a couple stories from there, just powerful testimonies where you get to see power of God displayed. Um, grab that remote for the little TV, please. And just turn that thing off. And I'll be teaching people this is and that's about how they're going to be doing things in here just to help everybody, just to keep all the work going and keep everything in the right, in the right setting and the right motion for all that we're doing and all that we're going and hoping to get some more skills learned among us. So there'll be more things we'll be available to be able to work with. So this this word is going to start in uh, Daniel three, and uh, I'm going to keep your thumb there. And um, I just wanted to make sure that we started to. Um, I thank you for praying in the first part. You know, we started. If we come early, we want to get into prayer and uh, start to seek God early and build build a foundation of prayer in here. Build a tabernacle of prayer. It's powerful. And uh, a couple other things I wanted to bring up is just during the worship, you know, as people come in here, we want to let them know kind of how we roll, how we're, we're going to be doing things. It's going to be, you know, the food and the drinks is going to be set aside during worship and during the word time, during prayer. So like electronics and things like this is, is not going to be a part of our, our worship service. It won't be a part of prayer. It won't be a part of um, the word time as well so just to keep those things in mind and um, and as we'll have new new things going on when people want to share and whatnot I, whatever's going on 
And I, I want all of our hearts to be engaged into the same thing, the same focus, and all in truly one accord, so we know that we're actually getting somewhere. If we're not, it grieves the Spirit. It grieves the Holy Spirit. If we cannot, if we cannot focus on the same thing, it will grieve the Spirit, and we'll be, we'll be wasting our time, truthfully. It is how God works. So please um, zero in to the thought and follow me as we follow the Holy Spirit into this, into this, into this thought here. I wanted to go ahead and just start to read here. We already know the passage. We know the story. Um, it never hurts to go over these things again and again to make sure we're hearing it right because I've heard things come and I've, had, I've, come to I've come to conclusions because of things that people have said. And I go check the passage myself and I have no clue where they got those things from. Because I'm like, that is not what the text says at all. And uh, today I, I kind of ran into that myself today in regards to the response that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego gave to the king here, King Nebuchadnezzar. He was a pagan king. Um, in verse 16, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered to the king, said, oh, to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. You know, I, I heard it taught that they said, Your Majesty. Maybe they say it in another place. I, I don't see that. When, when, the, when the rubber meets the road, you know what I mean? When it comes to, are you guys going to bow down when the music plays? It lists off all the music pieces that are going to move. In verse 10, it says, The sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackboot, the psaltery, and the dulcimer, all kinds of music. And they're supposed to fall down and worship the golden image. And he asks them again, Letting them know what the conditions really are, and they said it's. They says it's not careful to answer. It's like we've already established how we're going to do things. What does God have to say about these things? What happens here? Let's continue in verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it than, than was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, cast them into the burning fiery furnace, then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men, and took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of of the burning fiery furnace, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? Then answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, in the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire, and princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon those upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language would speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made dunghill because there is no other god that can deliver after this sword. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence, in the province of Babylon. Same thing happened, church. Look up at me, please. The same thing happened. They recognized the God of everything. When Daniel went into the lion's den, he comes out and King Darius makes the same thing. He says, we're going to worship Daniel's God. Surely a pagan nation that doesn't even pay mind to God can see the works of God happen in somebody's life. And it's so much to turn their eyes all to God. They don't even know His name. His God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's God. Daniel's God. And people of God who move in this presence. They move and they display the power of God. And people say, that's what I want. I, this is what makes sense. I see it now. You didn't have to announce it. If it's there... It is there. Moses moved under the power of the Holy Spirit. He put his staff down, leading 2.4 million children of Israel. And the Red Sea opens up. And they go through there. These people were scared. They didn't know what to think. There was fire behind them, blocking people who wanted to kill them and put them into captivity. And they moved under the power of God. Do you think anybody needed to tap him on the shoulder and say, guess what? God is moving right now. Did you know? Are you sure? Yeah, I, 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 have, a, I have a discernment for these kinds of things. Whenever the Red Sea opens, that means God is, at, God is at work right now. Really? I didn't know that. Thank God I have you here to help me understand when God is really moving or not. My dear friends, the power of God is evident. We don't need to be told when He's moving. We don't need to be told when He's moving. In these last days, there are voices coming from every direction under the sun, and they almost all have Bibles in their hands, speaking on behalf of God in their own eyes. But you just tell me one thing person with a Bible in your hand declaring to be a devout man of God or a woman of God who really knows what they're talking about. Where is the power of God in your life? Every time I hear a harsh word come from somebody, I hear words of careless talk, I hear words of renown from people saying that they know what they're talking about. I've heard, every, I've heard them all. I hear them defend themselves with their sarcastic words. They're harsh words, they're, they're conflicting words, they're controversial words. They spout them out like they are fools, like they know nothing at all. If they had the power of God, they would not be arrogant about it. They would not be disgusting about it. It would be glory, and the power of God would be known. You don't have to tell them, I know, I know what I'm right because of this, this, and this, and this, and this. Another dot-to-dot -dot program they've got going through the Word of God. Look at all this. Look at all that. You shouldn't have to explain it to anybody. If God is there, He's there. Either He is there or He is not. If you have to explain it, that means you don't know what you're talking about. Somewhere in your wicked heart, your defiant heart, there's an idol where it says, Me above God. And that's why the power is not there. The power of God only moves where He is Lord. That's why the staff come down and the seas opened up, because Jesus Christ was Lord. And I submit to you, the same one who opened up His hands and said it is finished is the same one who opened up His hands and made the Red Sea open up as well. Same God. Blessed be His name. When He gets involved with somebody's life, He says what's up. 
And you know what the Holy Spirit does not do? He does not argue. The Holy Spirit comes in someone's life. If it really is the Spirit of God, He will. If you get lucky enough to have that bush burn and hear from God, I'm telling you, you've got a very small window of obedience or you're not going to keep hearing from God. He does not debate. He does not argue with flesh. He doesn't argue with his own creation. He just says this is truth and you either agree or you miss everything else for the rest of your life and start to form idols of me above God in your own heart and start to become an idolatry speaker with a Bible in your hand, losing everything and losing the power of God. You don't need to explain it. The power of God is evident. If it's there, it's there. He doesn't need to be introduced. He doesn't need to be explained. If he's there, everybody knows. Every atheist will say amen. Every witch doctor will say praise be to God. Every pagan will say we're going to serve your God because I see the power at hand. Zacharias was called to go into the temple and burn incense. And he did. He was privileged to do it. I don't know why the Lord picked this man to do it because it seems from what scripture tells us that he wasn't ready to listen to the angel of the Lord and master the, master the position of submission to the word of the Lord. It did come to him. An angel of the Lord come into the temple while he's burning incense unto God and says you're going to have a son through your barren wife. And you're going to call him John. Pretty simple instructions. But somehow, people have streaks in them not to just say, Yes, be it unto me, as you have said, like Mary did. The angel came to her and she listened. The Holy Spirit proceeded, fell upon her, overshadowed her, because she said, Be it unto me, whatever God wants. No problem. But this one had something else to say. You see how the Spirit of God with this angel of the Lord, the messenger of God, you know what happened here? He says this is God's will. And he, and he asked a question, an honest question. Uh, Lord, or my, my Lord, do they sometimes say that to leadership? She's barren. And he says, he explains it to him. God all things are possible. And then he doubts it even more. And that's when it becomes an argument. It is sometimes okay to ask an honest question. God doesn't mind explaining. But he will not debate. He does not argue. For these people and the voices claiming to be of God, the biggest ones of God, the ones who really understand, they argue day and night about their theology because they don't have the Spirit of God. God does not argue. You bring the Word and they say yes or they say no and the story is over. They have picked this day in their eternity whom they will serve. God His way or God their way. It's an idol in their heart that says self above God. Every time the power of God is held up, it's because there's an idol in our hearts that sells self above God. Which place? I can't see it. God will show it to you if you ever get the luckiness of it. If you ever get the benefit of Him shining light. So many voices that try to tell you they know what they're talking about. Heard this guy preaching on the streets. Harsh, barking words. And I tapped his friend on the shoulder. I said, I don't think this is of the Lord. And he says, oh, Jonathan Edwards preached sinners in the hands of an angry God. Sometimes it's got to be harsh. Ah. Nice little mental program you got there. What about waiting on the Lord? Clearly, you haven't done it for a long time, precious friend. We hear people talking harshly, mocking the gay community, mocking the lukewarm churches, 
speaking against leadership like they don't know anything at all? Absolutely no respect for the leadership in the nation? Pagan nation? I don't see disrespect here in the scripture. They have careless pictures of our president up there. Make him look as crazy as Howdy Doody or something like this. No respect! And they claim to be God's number one because they're bold. I'm like, yeah, Moses was bold, but he opened up the Red Sea when he put his staff down. There was a conflict of interest. with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but they didn't lose respect. They just said, this is how we're going to do it. I'm not going to waste my words here. People today, they use these old voices as ways to defend their flesh today and say, I know I'm right because I can point at these things right here. I, can be, I'm, I know I'm right because the historical giants, they preached like that. I'm like, yeah, but look at their prayer closets. Look at the words that they laid down. Their books are still going today. Their denominations are still going today. They're men of renown that knew God in a way like these heroes of the old, the old prophets and the old apostles. Surely you can see a difference. Why are you being sarcastic? Well, Elijah was, yeah, but he called down fire from heaven and he twisted the prophets of Baal. Surely you can see a difference. Yeah, Peter, Peter was against the church at that time. Yes, and his shadow healed the city. He kicked off Pentecost for crying out loud. How are you going to say that this, you can't use the work of men who paid the price while you do nothing? And the word of God does not shape you. And you release all these careless words, bold words. Yeah, there's other people that were bold. They were conflicting. But look at their works that happened there. God was manifest there in such a mighty, mighty way. No, John Wesley called these people monsters of iniquity in the streets. Yeah. He also left a couple things behind, too. Dents in the hardwood floor because he prayed so long. He also left the Methodist church in a doctrine that still proves to be the strongest that we heard thus far. The most truest to the apostles' doctrine that we've seen thus far. Where the actual Holy Spirit releases his power to those that obey. Still happens even today. Well, who are you comparing yourself to again? I don't have to bridle myself like you're telling me to. I don't have to do what you're thinking, Robbie. You know something? I know John the Baptist might not have looked like he cared. But I'll tell you one thing. The Bible says he's the greatest preacher on earth, born of, born of a woman. And he had the boldness to do what most people don't have to do. And he loved not the world. A lot of these people, you'll find a place in there where they still worship the world. Proving that it's not God. Because God says, if you love me, you will be a, no longer a part of this world anymore. The cross ahead and the world behind. If you can find someone who claims to be moving in the power of God, will you still find them worshiping the things of this world? You can rest assured it is not of God. Unless they're still in the preemie stages and bless the Lord on oh my soul, they better get out of that stuff. Amen? That is God. His power is evident. You don't have to tell somebody what's going on. You don't have to tell them. This is the part that I was going to put online today, but I wanted to save it for today. One more controversial voice was Jesus himself. People use harsh words today and spew ridiculously unspiritual words, ungentle, ungodly words against people who are obviously doing wrong. It's not, a, it's, it's a no-brainer. And they come down on it like it's so hard. I'm like, you know something? Jesus did use harsh words. He called somebody a dog. Who was in need? 
who knew what he was doing when he said it. He knew what he was doing when he created the universe in six days. He knows what he's doing when he conquered death and sin at Calvary. My dear friends, there is a difference. There is a difference. One place I see the power and the works of Almighty God. When that staff came down, when they went into the fiery furnace, when he went into the lion's den, when you see all these places where his shadow heals the city over and over and over, the people who used strong words, they had a life of power behind it. Please don't use the, the language of the giants. People defending tongues today. I say I do too. I see it in scripture. No problem. But why is it that we do things that we can do in our flesh? We focus so much on things that we can do in our flesh. A lot of these circles, they do that. All kinds of things. Jesus Jesus did cast out demons. He did a lot of these things, but he walked on water. The power of God was there. These truths today is to humble us, for us to seek to know God, that the power will be released through our lives as well. I believe it can be like that. Jesus promised that it could be greater than us, greater than the things he did. It is only, it is not to make us feel bad, it's to, make, it's to silence the voices out there. The harsh voices, the hot voices out there today that claim to be number one. I'm just going to say, my dear friends, prove it, because his power is evident. That's how it was in the Old Testament. That's how it is right now, and that's how it's going to be forever. This Lord Jesus never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that was, and he is, and he is to come. I'm telling you, he is almighty God. And if he gets involved in your life, the whole world will know who God really is. But if there remain an idol, we're going to jump back into the category of talking about things that is not real for us. Jesus Christ must become our reality more and more every day. He is worthy to be listened to. He is worthy to be trembled before. If we forget how to tremble before the Lord, it's because we've forgotten who He is. If we saw the Red Sea open today, we would fall on our faces and tremble. And I'm saying that it's open right now. We have no reason not to tremble before that mighty name. The demons, let me tell you, one demon could turn you into mincemeat in two seconds. If God allowed it, God, that would happen. They tremble at that name. They tremble at that name for a reason. You know why? Because they have revelation that sometimes we need to have. We need the revelation that those demons have. If somebody who is much stronger than us will tremble and cower at that mighty name of Jesus. If we do not too, we have a lot of seeking his face to do. I praise the Lord for the people in God's house today that will set their hearts to seek to know him. If you lost your child, you would do everything in your power to find him again and make sure he's safe. You would do anything you could because it's so precious to you. The connection between mother and child, parent and child, is unbelievable. It is powerful. I'll tell you something, that the connection to the husband and the bride is powerful. The bride of Christ has an aching in her heart to listen to everything he has to say, that his power might be displayed on this age today, and that everybody who sees the works of God will say, I am making a decree and everything in my whole surroundings, everything I have control over is going to worship that God. Because now I know he's real. I didn't hear another slogan. I didn't hear another seminar. I saw the power of God. And bless his name forever, it was evident. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and honor 
thy name forever because you are glorious and worthy, Lord God. Forgive us that we did not tremble at that name. Forgive us that we did not tremble at your name, Lord God. You reveal, you reveal thy son to us, our hearts, and we and we release things unto thee, O oh God. We release and then you restore and you, you bring revival, you bring mightiness in our life, and people can see the difference for us. Not puffed up people, but gentle people who know their Lord. I thank you for this house. I thank you for this word. I thank you for the unction of the Holy Ghost in this place, Lord. Even at our starting stages, we thank you for all that you are and all that you've done. Thank you for the work that is going on in the hearts of your people. We thank you for that oil that proves that we belong to thee. I thank you, Lord, for a sobering word to keep us in line and to remember who you really are. That those who knew you reverenced you. That those who knew you trembled at thy name. And Lord God Almighty, may we never turn you in our own minds into something that you're not. And may your name continue to be glorious, and may your power continue to be evident in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sister Ella, would you, can you help me with the flipping yeah. of the song? Okay. Sister Kathy, do you want to come sing over here? Anybody get a good word today? Yes. Amen. Very good. Amen. To be glorious. Thank you, Lord. Yep. You gotta get out of that, sister, and all the songs are gonna be on the right hand side. Get out of that. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, and there's all your songs on the right hand side. Can we start with the uh, How Great Thou Art? Actually, get rid of that distraction. Right here. Yes. yes. And How Great Thou Art right there to the right. Yes, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Yes. Oh, amen. H.
Y'all getting hot? You gotta do the new one too sometime. Which one is it? Um, an L for God's sake. Went to the uh, went to the university for the first time to do evangelism. That was really nice. I felt like I, I I'm glad I waited till after I got through one of my later humps that I'm working on, and the obedience was getting more full. So I didn't talk like a lot of the people who go out there, and they were really heartful. And so people saw me, and they 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 were. A couple people were already kind of like disapproving. They sent the disapproval signs and I didn't respond to anything. Just looked at them or just, you know, nothing, you know. I'm not there to hurt their feelings. I'm not there to compete with them, you know. And if we will obey the Lord and let our idols come down, you know what's going to happen? It won't be between me and them. And I won't even make it into even that they think that. Their view isn't going to change my view, you know. His view is all that matters. It's between them. And it was, it's getting easier. You know, the further along we come, it's sometimes it's easier where we don't lose track and we let the Lord just be glorified and let them speak. And people came and talked to me. I had some really nice talks. It was really awesome. But some lady, because the banner has the lyrics to this song. This song right here has some of the lyrics on the banner. And I couldn't remember what the name of the song was called. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, Christ has conquered death and sin, or what? <laughs> Anyways, it's been getting really exciting. I think, I think, you know, the, the, the web page, the page is getting stronger and it's just exciting, so I'm praising the Lord for it all. strive for holiness in the same way, you know what I mean? There's a big difference there. And I didn't say anything about it. I just said, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? And it was really cool. I can see the changes happening, so it's getting exciting. You know what I'm saying? Where you feel like you want to just get in there and correct it on all that stuff. It's like, you know what? If God can't show himself strong, then I don't have to help him. <laughs> I can just help him by doing what he says and they'll figure it out. Circle. Circle around with Amen. 
can be led back are people who get misinformed. They're people who lose their way. Their way is God's way. They mean that. And if that's what he really meant in the first place, he will be able to lead them home. It's the people who are rebellious sheep that he doesn't go after. He goes after the lost sheep in great, greater glory in heaven when one of those come back than everybody else in the pen already. Amen? It's, it's, it's different if you're on the path and you stumble. Right than if you're on the path and you choose a different path. Right. There's no, and knowing, sometimes we don't know how much it's going to cost us. Good song, huh? That's a good song. I it's liked a, it. It's a couple songs. See, I told you it's his favorite. You don't need caffeine, you just need a country again. <laughs> That's what he likes. Come now. Let's see if I can remember this, okay? Bye. 
a, there's a song for the moment, you know. You can tell when you're hitting the right one or not. <laughs> Amen. How you doing, man? You recovered okay? I don't know. So, absolutely. Oh, good, good, good.
now. Heavenly 
that one and the up from the grave and the um who would who would valor. Okay, we'll do two valor. Okay, and then we can end with that. Um You wanna end with this one? Um, I'm gonna do this one, and then shall we gather, and then up from the grave, and we can okay. go there. Sounds good. Ooh, I'm hot now. Are you guys hot? You're hot. Glad we got that thing going, huh? titles. Okay.
the real river, it'll be a big deal. Oh, <laughs> it'll be like looking over the Grand Canyon and then multiply it by another thousand and you're talking about the river, okay? It's going to be glory. <laughs> Do what you can to spend more time in any place that you need to. You know, drive. 